coming like a geezer. Welcome, everybody. It is once again time for Gray Beard's Studio. This is episode number 62. Today, we are tackling something a little bit more mainstream, not quite as weird as we've done in the past. We are going for 1968 Marvel number one issues. Now, there was eight of them, including Captain Savage and his Leathernecks. Uh, so we have a, a decent amount to choose from, but you'll be getting something classic one way or the other. Um, we are missing. Bigfoot today. Uh, I believe uh, Kelsey's gone on one of his unannounced sabbaticals. Uh, we don't know when he will re-emerge, uh, but um, we will do the best we can without him uh, today. And then, of course, we will plan accordingly in the future until uh, he emerges from the swamp, probably with like everything colored and everything finished and everything done. It's... Um, it's the way of the Kelsey, and we've uh, we've learned to come to accept it. Uh, but uh, there are some people that have shown up, uh, particularly one of your favorites, one of the guys that was uh, the original member of the show, and there was just two of us. Welcome, the always reliable David Williams. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Glad you could make it. <laughs> have, I always... I missed, have I missed any? No. There you go. You have not. And uh, I'm always sitting here worried. I keep thinking, what if I show up today and no one else does? But <laughs> here we are. Well, at least we've got you and we've got someone else who's here because, let's be honest, he has no place else to go. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Gary Martin. There he is. Oh, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> what does your hat say? Okay. Can't see it. That's the top. It's too much. Fox Trot Juliet Bravo. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, the chat knows what that means. That's, that's do they? That's all we need. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, you know, one thing was brought to my attention recently, and someone said, "If you're going to live stream, it should be entertaining." And I went, "That's where I've been failing. That's where the fa <laughs> so today." Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to we'll do the best we can. Um, Check it out. No, what is? Oh, okay. Applause. That, cr crickets, I, I, rim shots. So I'm gonna try this out uh, throughout. I will pepper it throughout the show. <laughs> okay, we shall see. Or is it just gonna sound like static, or will it actually come through, and we'll actually get? Uh, we'll, yeah, try we'll, them out. Test them right now. Yeah, just give us one right now. Okay. What? 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 Is that? What is that supposed to be? Okay, okay that, that works. Okay, the crickets work. That's good. Right, We're so probably using the crickets a lot today. I don't you know. You can't hear the, the uh, booing or the, no. No, the rim shot. You can't hear it either. All right. Looks like I think the crickets. Well, crickets so, work. Crickets, crickets, crickets you, got, work. you got one thing working there. Told you you needed that bell, Gary. Told you. Yeah, I know. Hey, um, <laughs> we saw earlier that uh, Anakin Eudophia was in the chat. Anakin, if you are still. In the chat, I'm extending you a last second offer to come on. We wanted to get you on the show. We have not done it, but if you're game, let me know. Game, let me know in the chat, and I will send you a link, and you can drop in and draw Marvel superheroes from 1968. If not, we will. Uh, we will. Uh, we'll cruise on anyway. Let's well, we got to give him a few minutes to, you know, like brush his teeth and comb his hair. Well, you know, <laughs> pressure's on. 
Um, okay, let's see who's here. Corum is here all the way from Australia. He says, I missed the poll. Won't miss the show. Can't wait to see the art. Um, that's a lot of anticipation. I'm feeling a little bit of pressure there. But um, Halder6480 is here. Robert the Bruce. Uh, JVS Stylor is here. Post pass postmaster postmaster dan also known as past master dan he'll deliver your mail but he'll do it late it's past master dan uh anakin eudophia just mentioned him repairman jack is here dan the pizza man genovese brian norton all the way from japan ntm comics pantheon spam bot pity ma oh uh you know pity ma well we'll get to that in a minute bruce sma artist bruce sma artist looking forward to joining the live again this week and another afternoon of great art. Let's hope so. Birdman Burr is here. Uh, I'm here. That's always good. 40-year-old Graybeard. He says, uh, yes. The 1960s comics where heroes often face absurd situations and villains with exaggerated mannerisms, including whispering threats or making dramatic statements in unexpected context. God, that sounds exactly like this show. Uh, Ellie, first herald of Coomer's Gate. <laughs> I'm early for once. Hail the early bird. Sean Allen is here. Richie Dupe Squibs. Uh, handheld. Holy Hand Grenades is here. Sorry. Zaid Comics. That's uh, Phil Diaz, also known as Merv the Astro Chimp, is joining us. Dale A. Um, hmm. Kel Razor is here. That's always good. Richie Dupe. Uh, Kelsey went back through the Stargate again. <laughs> I, think, I think you may be correct on that. And I don't think he knows how to read the hieroglyphics on the other side to get back. So it may be a while. Uh, Skull Nasher says the Gators finally got Kelsey. Killer Kovacs, careful, he might be burning bridges. <clears throat> There's a rim shot right there, Gary. It was perfect. <laughs> Give him the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get this. Yeah, I got to get it uh, ready. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, Biblio Bob is here. He says, I have a drawing idea for David Williams. You could draw Batman, but to stay within today's rules, when you finish the picture, hang it on a wall and call it Bruce Banner. Mm. That's really convoluted, and I'm not sure if you actually got there. You know, that, that, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Okay. Jay Dredd is here. Best Age Comic Storm D. I said Birdman Bird, didn't I? Let's see here. I'm going to ask you guys a poll question in just a second as soon as we get through this. DJ Close, her and the Steadfast. Tommy Two Socks made it. He says, hey, Aaron, Dave, and Gary, thanks for being here. He's, that's a little kind of uh, underhanded shot. At it. These, the chat names intrigue me. He's bragging that he has two socks. Yeah, well. What I, is like, is it is this like irony? Does he have like only one foot? I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. So what you're saying, Gary, is everybody has two socks. So what is, exactly. why is that? Why is he calling that exactly. out? That's interesting. There you go, two socks. Yeah, answer us if you can. Uh, Cole King is here. Uh, let's see. Who it depends on where he wears them. That's true. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, how about this one? So Curialt Innone. So Curialt Innone. Wow. Marcus Killer Group, purveyor of all things... Uh, Oh, wait a minute. Anakin Eudophia says, hey, Aaron, I'm definitely down to join for a future episode. Do send the... So he can't, stand, <laughs> yep, he can't stand the pressure. He cannot stand the pressure. He can't just come in. He's got to be prepared. All right, I will. Uh, we'll hook you up. Uh, let's. Why don't we shoot for next week then, Anakin? Next week, right here on Greybeards, we're expecting you to do a giant wall mural while we do 9 by 12 inch drawings. There you go. <laughs> so, um, all right. Uh, Robert the Bruce is here. Death Metal Hero. Cullen. Uh, let's see. Who do we got? He's a monster. Is here. I'm sorry. He's a monster. Death Metal Hero. I just said that. Uh, and I'll say it again. Okay. Uh, let's see. Birdman Burr says that Kelsey's finishing up an anime season right now. Could be. Could be. <laughs> and Toshiro is here. Thank you for joining us, Toshiro. And thank you for shortening your name so I can say it. <laughs> uh, Citizen Ronan says it's two socks from Dances with Wolves. Ah, there mm. you go. Mm. Mm. Okay. I'm trying, you know how long ago it's, it's been like 20 years since I've seen that movie. <laughs> okay. 
All right, let's do a little show and tell. I've got a ton of stuff to show, but uh, show uh, your David, stuff first. Well, but we want to save mine for last because it's the best. No, no, no. Show okay. Gary's. All right, Gary, go ahead. <laughs> Gary, what do you got for us? I am currently. I'm gonna make you big. On commissions. Um, my art book. Brush with destiny. I got the proofs uh, a couple days ago and checked them all out. And so I'm waiting for them to uh, actually print it. So it's, I will probably have books in hand soon. And that's as precise as I can be. It could be two weeks. It could be four weeks. I, I'm not, I don't know. So I'm trying to catch up on um, commissions and the piece behind me is a 18 by 24 poster. The client wanted me to do a lady justice in the Alphonse Mucha style. So these are the finished inks mm -hmm. and I will be coloring it uh, later in the week. And so it'll be a, a finished painting and I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll have it done by, by next week and I'll be able to show it off. Now you're going to, um, you're going to paint that in Mucha style, I would assume, right? So it's going to be yep. kind of the flat colorish. So you're going to do watercolors. Yep. What are you doing? Watercolor and a little bit of, uh, Gouache. All right. I got a set of gouaches. I have not cracked them open yet because I've been so fascinated with uh, acrylics. And um, which leads me into my. Uh, oh. Oh. I am ready. Dude, that looks like you picked that up at like a like a, it's a science project or something. It's <laughs> a little closed tray. Yeah, doubles as uh, a uh, mixing tray. Hmm. That's uh, that's nice. You know, I got a. Uh, I did I mention this last week? I might have mentioned it on one of my other streams. But I got one of those wet pallets. You guys seen those things? No, no. They're a plastic. Oh, it's right here. Let me show you. This is a pretty large one, but it's a. It's just a plastic case with a lid on it, right? But inside, you've got you got this piece of paper, right? And it's a special paper. It's really thick and really tough. You can't tear it. So you soak it for 15 minutes. And then underneath that is a sponge, right? It's this thin sponge. And so what you do is you, you soak this and then wring it out so it's damp. And you put these in here on top of each other. And the acrylic paints, which dry notoriously fast, they absorb moisture up through this paper and the sponge to keep wet. They so stay they wet. And then at night, you just close her up and... Uh, keeps it from evaporating it's the paint for the for the next day yeah i've been i've used this uh, three straight days now i i need to clean it because apparently you can you can reuse the paper over and over and over again because it's so tough but you still have to scrape off the extra what you can get off paint wise wow so and it, it's worked really really well just because i've had trouble with my acrylics drying like if you're doing you're working on acrylic painting for like three or four hours by that fourth hour your paints are dry yeah. on your palette and so, forget about them the next day. Right. And so, yeah, and so you're starting over and you're wasting a lot of paint. But this, those, those actually work really nice. And this was like, this was like 24 bucks. So it's not, you know, it wasn't that expensive on Amazon. And uh, they have several different ones, bigger ones, smaller ones, that type of thing. So, uh, okay. Let me show you guys what I've been up to. I am been watching tons of like process videos and how-to videos and you know, videos and Shelly's sneaking in the back. So she's, oh, she's saying, Aaron, change the camera, change the no. camera. No, well, just for them, I would change the camera because Mama's sure looking pretty today. There we go. Okay. So just came in to say, I'm going to shut the door. Okay. I keep shutting the door. I know I'm loud. She always comes in and oh tells me how gosh. loud I am. Do you guys feel like he's yelling at you? I feel bad. Like, <laughs> did nope. they make you mad? <laughs> no. Goodness. Nope. Hey, I'm used no. to talking to my mom who can't hear, and I'm just like, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I keep closing the door and the dog yeah. keeps coming in and opening the door. Well, and the dog just uh, took a big old dump on oh. the carpet. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be shampooing some carpets. Oh. So enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy. Well, so exciting. Speaking of dumps, let's hope this isn't exactly what we're going to be. Okay, so you guys remember. Oh, painting. He's so excited. My fire and ice painting. Make sure that. But then, here we go. Conan the Barbarian. For only $350. There it is. Wow. 
Are the prices right? No, the had prices aren't forever. right. I don't know. They just keep moving stuff around. Um, so the interesting thing about this is you guys can see that the the muscle okay. muscle musculature here is very stylized, very comic booky. It almost so, looks like plug plug esque. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking. And, and so I'm not sure um, if I'm going to continue to go in that direction. If you look at the, you know, this is very kind of smooth and more, I'm not going to say realistic, but natural, you know, mm -hmm. where this is like, if this was a black and white drawing, you know, you would totally accept it as comic book art. But I wonder if it's like too, too much of this stuff to be accepted as kind of a, a painting. I mean, you either accept it as, you know, stylized interpretation or you don't, but. I'm trying to figure out if I want to uh, keep going in this direction or maybe lighten up in the articulation of the muscles a little bit. Uh, but it was it was fun. And uh, I'm starting to figure out how to get this stuff to work. Um, what I what I did here was the darks are a um, a burnt umber, which is which kind of leans into the green family. And then, of course, the you can see there's burnt sienna, this reddish in the skin and then i would mix those two to get my mid-tone uh flesh tone so in a lot of ways i guess you'd consider it a red green complementary uh, rather than a monochromatic because obviously i use more than one color but it, it i did want to do it all sort of in one uh color sort of or color family and then try to create kind of a value painting out of it which i think i did successfully well, the, uh, the flesh tones are are very vibrant so maybe that the the greenish hue and the darker color, maybe that's helping that. Yeah, it's it, it's always it's always interesting to kind of figure out how dark do I want those shadows? Because I went in here, these were much darker, almost like they were inked. And I just felt like they felt too artificial. So I went in here with some uh, sepia, or not sepia, uh, burnt, burnt sienna over the top of this to kind of lighten up that shadow area. So it wasn't as, it still looks dark on camera, but it's much lighter. Um, so you get that uh, tanned, you know, yeah, own and burnt from the sun skin tone. It, it tends to to make the, you know that type of color is 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 not as bright. It, it kind of dulls it. But you yeah. you've got the tan thing going, and he looks. Um, I can't think of other word other than <laughs> vibrant. It's vibrant. Well, you know, and it's funny because the uh, you wouldn't think so, but the acrylics tend to be sort of lustrous. Yeah, you can get that from acrylics, which maybe you know you you look at the acrylics and you think, oh, is this going to you know dry matte or whatever? Uh, but you can get them by you know dropping in your highlights and stuff. You can get them so they really you know feel shiny, <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better. So yeah, so um, I'm really leaning hard into these, and I, I really. Uh, I might go this direction on. I, in fact, I'm pretty positive. I, I'm going to finish that oil painting next that I have up there, that dinosaur piece. But uh, I'm really thinking that acrylics might be the way to go on the movie poster because I'm really starting to kind of get a feel for how to get you know uh, some shape and volume out of them. What's your second choice? Uh, oils, which uh, is. Like I said, it's been years since I've done the oil painting, so I, I want to see how it goes when I finish up that dinosaur painting. But these dry so fast, and they're easier to scan and photograph than oil yeah. would be. So, and, and I, like I said, I, I, this is the first time I've ever used acrylics, uh, the, like that, that fire and ice painting and then this. And so it was really kind of a foreign thing to me, but I, I'm starting to get a feel for them and, and how to make them work. So, so this is only your second one. Well, if you count if you count this, this is technically my first foray. But okay, just, so even your third one. <laughs> yeah, this is my third one. <laughs> this is my third one yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's uh, remarkable. Well, thank you, Gary. So, but this isn't all I've been doing. I've been David wanted to know if I was snorting cocaine because I have been just drawing like a madman. So I've been uh, messing around with kind of doing some sort of. Over exaggerated Superman. <laughs> Who's his barber? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of this weird combo between uh, oh. Wright and David Finch, you know, that I've been kind of messing around with, just having some fun. Uh, uh, a little off the side, but leave the curl alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Actually, when I did issues of Justice League, I did his curl like that. It was I don't recall long. another artist ever making his curl that long. That was fun. Even Wrightson didn't make it that long. Well, I got I to gotta stamp it with my own uh, thing. You know? <laughs> so. And then uh, last night, because whenever, whenever I'm in doubt, I go right to the man thing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> <In doubt. laughs> I'm losing my powers. It's time for a bad thing. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock at night. Time to... Nobody's <laughs> watching. I go straight to the man thing. <laughs> <laughs> but no one's watching. <laughs> oh, Star does, his, does talk about uh, the Superman. His muscles have muscles. <laughs> <laughs> So this is uh, the reason, actually, I, I love drawing man thing because of um, now this is really going to sound bad because of his head. And uh, <laughs> oh, I love that. But he's so unstructured that uh, you can just sort of like, you know, you don't really have to be. Painful. Wait a minute. And veiny. Yeah, he's a little veiny. Aaron, and... hold on a second. <laughs> Yeah, scary. <laughs> I can't hear All right, you. Continue. Okay. Well, we didn't get the sound effects, man. You need to work on your sound effects, dude. Uh, Sony, that's I've done all that this past week in my spare time whilst working on Kit Carter. And you're probably saying, Aaron, show us some Kit Carter. Well, yeah, I'm saying that. Aaron, right, show us some Kit Carter. I want, right, to see that, I want to see that splash page. You're going to get it in just a second. So here's the lead up to the splash page, right? Here's the pencils, of course. We have uh, Kit and uh, Merv going through the uh, the jungles of planet Doom. How do you keep your pencils? So wait, 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 wait. Yeah. How do you keep your pencils so clean without any smudges? Uh, well, I'm using an HB, so uh, it's you know it's not really a, that soft. I mean, it's a softer pencil, but dude, my whole hand, the whole side of my hand was like black when I was done with this. It just I don't know. Um, Aaron, I, I have to uh, tip my hat to how you utilize the vertical and horizontal panels. Well, thank you, Gary. Um, <laughs> so I'm very much... I'm you're, like, you're supposed to say, some people say I have a great vertical <laughs> and a horizontal. <laughs> Depends on who you talk to. Um, I, I have very much a... Uh, Frazetta sort of sensibility of alien worlds. They're all like, uh, you know, weird jungles. Okay, um, that top right panel, the stepping over the log, I, I see where you, what you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, then you've got this monster coming out of the ground. Looks like uh, Kit and Merv are in trouble. They are indeed, because this is what you get on the next page. Right. Um, is there a sound effect? Although I think I think I think her, booty. I think her calf is a little too short, so I'm gonna have to redraw that a little bit. But anyway, uh yeah, someone said uh someone on Twitter said that they saw this because I posted it, and the guy's wife saw the drawing and said that her butt is so um round and clean. That it, it draws your attention right to her butt on this page. It's like this, uh -huh. like the one small open area is her butt. Well, what, what's her point? Uh, I know. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Well, of course. Um, this should be really interesting. I think uh, what Matt will do when Matt when Matt inks this, what he'll do is he'll beef up these holding lines around the monster, so he'll get a little bit more separation from all this debris that's falling around him, and he's kind of getting lost in there because you don't really have the line weights in there. So it looks a little bit messier than I think it actually will look. Once like again, the anchor saves the day. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, uh, you know, coloring, of course, will help if uh, if we ever see Kelsey again. Why? Why do you shade in the blacks? Uh, because I, the X. Well, because I knew I was going to put this online. Ah. Uh, so normally, I yeah, I wouldn't have filled that in normally. Are you going? Are you going to do an artist edition so those could? I don't know. Maybe I'm really, really happy with how the artwork is coming out on this book. So yeah. I might, I might do that. Um, so we we shall see. 
I don't know really. I mean, there's always some people that want that stuff, but I don't know that there's that many people that want it that that makes it uh, worthwhile to you know put the money into printing up something like that. But um, Gary, was I ever this complete of a penciler? Yes, I was. Yes. <laughs> well, you were never a big line work guy, though. You were more of a you know. Well, shade of I would, yeah, the T jaw uh, pencils were were ridiculous okay so anyway david what have you got for us something anything what can you share with us yeah 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 yeah. uh i sent it to you but um, oh, of course i've got to go do all the work now uh, uh, but we know what this guy is this is fearsome right here yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you're you you're ordering me. fearsome right uh now. okay hang on a second I, i'm not even on twitter i gotta go to twitter hang on a second here so um, are you done with the complete book at this point, or are you still... Um... Just, a, just a few more pages. Okay, so uh, it says, David Williams sent a photo. Oh, my gosh, you sent a lot of photos. Why do you, you send like 100 <laughs> things? <laughs> it's just a bunch of random... I don't remember what I show on here or not. It's just a bunch of random Marvel stuff. So I just, Ooh, that, I, that's cool. That's Archie, I think. Is that yeah. Archie versus Marvel? That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that Daredevil mm -hmm. piece is nice. I know you guys were like, show us. I'm like, I don't know. I could send me like 30 files. I got to load all of them first so I can. Uh... Well, well, blow up my screen first because I'm okay. going to pretend to be Kelsey. Okay. Hey, everybody. Here's my first book of scribbles <laughs> that I have. <had. laughs> Hold on. I need a cigarette and stuff and blow some. <laughs> But this was his first book of scribbles, and I got this, and man, this is amazing. Oh, this, that's all Kelsey stuff, huh? Oh yeah, uh huh. Look at oh, look at that. It's like early Kelsey, but it's still you know amazing. This book awesome. got talent. <clears throat> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, scribbles, so and then on the back it says "coming soon, scribbles too." <laughs> and when was this when was that published? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me look at this. Uh, Two thousand nine. <laughs> it's coming soon. Coming soon. Is that girl drawing herself? Yeah, she's drawing yeah. like <laughs> hyper extended okay. herself just to draw her butt crack. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> All the crazy guys in Antarctic. They'll publish yeah. anything. Um, all right, here we go, David. Here's your stuff. All right, there you go. What, okay, so what? Yeah, go that, ahead. That that was for a cover for Marvel, and uh, I got Sean Galloway to, to color it for me. Oh, Cheeks Galloway, how about that? Yeah, he's a guy we should have on the show. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he would, but we'll yeah. see. Um, so th they wanted two sides of you know the old and the new. Uh, oh, so you got the golden age and the modern yeah. age. That's yeah. cool, man. <clears throat> That's your greatest cover yet. I love that because I'm a big golden age Marvel fan. Yeah, that was fun. So you got the Human Torch and Toro back there, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Who's the Who's the Who's the chick in the red and the blue with the brown hair behind Wolverine? Or red and blue? Uh, that's Wasp. Where's her wings? I get they had a version of her where she didn't have the wings. She would just oh. grow large. Oh, right. She she was like giant man, but she was like a chick giant man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I drew her for what was this? For? Aaron, be politically correct. It's giant chick. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, was this for was this for that that kids line? You know the yeah, uh, all ages stuff. The all ages yeah. stuff. Yeah, I did some covers for them too. Yeah. Those were the best, most fun stuff. I, I wanted to do the interiors, and they were like, no, you're too expensive. They don't sell that well. We can't afford you. And I'm like, oh, because I would love you know, there's to do the inventory books. There's a, way, there's a way that Marvel movies could bring back Chris Evans as uh, the Human Torch because they showed the Human Torch in uh, uh, Captain America First Avenger. And you could have him come back as that version because they showed the Android in there and just have him and say, they put the fizz, the visage of 
uh, Steve Rogers on his face. So he's almost like the vision. So he's wearing Steve Rogers face. So it's Chris Evans. So he's the human torch again. Cause he played the human torch in the fantastic four movies. Yeah. He was the only good thing in that movie. <laughs> but wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> uh, nerd. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm trying to save them. They need help. Boy, they do they ever. Um, <laughs> okay, so what's the story on this? Dare? Is this just a commission or what? This yeah, that cool. was a commission. And this is the first Daredevil I've seen in a in a Spider Man type pose. I, mean, <laughs> I was he, trying to do like a Ramita type thing, like a Ramita Junior. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do my get my Ramita Junior on. It didn't quite he's work. got his knee behind his shoulder blade. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> So are you uh, are you bigger fan of the yellow and black or the red outfit? Um, I like the red. I like both of them. I wish they could do a combination of both. Just do the yellow and black one, but just color it red. You know what I'm saying? Just take the yellow out and just make it red. Still, yeah, because you'd still have all the dark elements on it. That would be nice. Hmm. Interesting. Well, there you go. That's uh, you'll have to do a sample piece for us so it show us what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and then uh, what do we got here? Now, I've seen this one before, but I can't remember what it was from. Is it this was a commission or a cover piece? But this is a Wolverine. Oh yeah, that was a commission. And then, oh, you just did that in twenty twenty three. Yeah, and uh, the, the I started it on one of these shows. That's where I saw it. Yes. I knew it looked familiar. <laughs> I knew it looked familiar. Uh-oh. Hold on my microphone. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, Kieran, uh, Kieran, uh, no. Uh, who, who did this? Um, Kaiser. Yeah. He colored it. But I think you got the color piece in there. Yeah, we can't hear you, David. Oh, you can't hear me? No, yeah. I can. Okay. You were very low, but you came blasting through there, so okay. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, um... The color piece. Uh, oh, it's around here someplace. Karan. It should be right next to the other one. Well, it ain't, though. I mean, I, I'm... That's a marker piece all the way back 2014. Mm-hmm. Now, that's that's uh, Ms. Marvel back in her 70s outfit. How she should always be, showing that hey. midriff and that yep. two top, yep. yep, big old juicy thighs. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm. That outer space background is awesome. Oh, thanks. Did you use your Presto pen to do the stars? Uh, yes, I did. Uh-huh. Well, I got, I got you figured out, man. <laughs> figured out. Well, now I want to... Why don't I have that... Uh, let me see, get the color one again here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see his style on it now. Right? Yeah, let me bring this up. You guys can see. Now, you guys remember we had... Uh, we had... Uh, Koran Kaiser Stone on the show before when we did the Scooby Doo episode as a while ago. Um, Kicked our butts. <laughs> yeah, he did the uh, that that space dude. But look at that sort of into the Spider Verse oh, coloring, and kind of the kind of the vibe it's got, right? Look at that, man. That's electric. I love it. Yeah, that boy got talent. <laughs> <laughs> How come the only guys we can get on this show are um, animators or? Uh, or uh, uh, mural crack, crackheads. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good artist. Come on the show. <laughs> I'll be on I'm your show for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> or, or oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll be Birdman on your show Bird for the chat. <laughs> Birdman Bird Burr says thick thighs save lives. So there you that, go. That's right. <laughs> it creates <Man>. lives. <laughs> Wesley Gleason says Michael Golden vibes on that Wolverine. I could see yeah. that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Michael has inspired all of us into certain degrees. That's for sure. And I think we all do as artists. We take you know what we can from people we admire and kind of incorporate it into what we're doing. So you always can see elements of different artists at different times uh, in our work, which is always kind of fun. Some people get. Uh, some some artists get kind of upset when you call them out for not call them out but bring up oh yeah that looks like so and so that looks like so and so um, I don't you know it's like if I I know my stuff I, I know when I draw monsters it looks like rights and I'm fully aware of that so why would, well, I- would, would you be upset if if somebody uh, brought up a name of an artist you did not respect 
Yes, that drives me nuts. Oh, man, that, saying, yeah, it really like your inking there, Aaron. It's very Coletta-ish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you lousy son of a kill you. Uh, <laughs> your, 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 stuff, your stuff reminds me of Gabe El Taib. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> the first time you hear Aaron use the F word on somebody, go oh, f- yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta pull out those Christian swear words at that point, you know. It's like, so I think uh, uh, the chat has been challenged. Next time you see Aaron at a show, you know. Oh, no, no, it happens all the time online. I got I, people will say, "God, it reminds me of so and so." That reminds me of so and so, and it's like they say that, and you go, "I have never looked at that guy's work in my entire life, you know, to look at it for inspiration." You know, that you remind me of Don Heck. I'm like, really? <laughs> How, how is that even possible? You know? yeah. Shots fired. Yeah. <laughs> Block. <laughs> and I don't exactly. mind Don Heck. I mean, Don Heck's fine. I mean, but you know, it's like, yeah, you look just like Selby Sum. I'm like, oh, you. Wow. And you're on. You look like a bucket. Sh- no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to know what you look like, pal? Oh, yeah, Aaron, so- you're very Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness all right guys you know um we're doing 1968 first issues as i mentioned at the top of the show uh there was they were they released uh eight or nine uh first issues and those were uh captain america captain marvel iron man submariner silver surfer um doctor strange um, who am I forgetting? I said, uh, Hulk and, uh, Captain Savage and his leathernecks. So <laughs> that's kind of, the, that was kind of an odd choice. Where did that come from? But indeed there it was. In fact, it was their first offering in 1968. That was the first book out of all, when they, when DC, when they finally broke the distributor gridlock that DC or, uh, vice grip that, that DC had on them because they had, they were doing their distribution through DC comics until 1968. And they I broke free of that. <clears throat> and, and DC was controlling how many titles they would let them produce. Wow. So, uh, so in 1968, they finally got free of that, got their own distribution deal. And then they just launched all these, you know, everybody that was in a tales to astonish or tales of suspense, or, you know, uh, they got their own book. And for some reason, Captain Savage and his Leathernecks was part of that group. Nick <laughs> Fury, crazy. Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., that's the other one. So there, there you go. go. Those are your nine books that you have to choose from. Um, we can only imagine what Kelsey would be doing if he were here. Um, but, I think he uh, would have picked Captain Savage. I think he would have. Mm-hmm. It either, Yeah, Captain Savage and his uh, Leathernecks wouldn't have surprised me one bit. Uh, but I... Randy, I you got to ask what I'm going to do. Oh, I'm sorry. David, what are you going to do? Submariner. <laughs> you lousy son of a... <laughs> You're not doing the Submariner because I'm doing the Submariner. God dang it, man. <laughs> we're, com- we're competing now, bitch. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> now, this is what we used to do before, before Kelsey joined the show. David and I would do draw streams <laughs> and they weren't gray beards, but they were just, and we would draw the same thing. And then we would talk trash the whole time. And I would always win. And, uh, Lies except, and fabrications, <laughs> except for the times I didn't. And, uh, so, uh, but we're not going back to those days because this is of course not a competition show. It's simply a studio hangout event. So David will not be doing Submariner. Oh yes, uh, I will. <laughs> one of our, if you, Oh my gosh! All right, I'm gonna. No, I changed my. I, I changed my mind. No, I'm. I was gonna do Iron Man because Aaron suggested it, and then I just realized Aaron's doing a naked guy. So who's the next naked guy? So I'm gonna do Silver Surfer. Ah, uh, you know, someone was. <laughs> everybody loves Silver Surfer, dude. Everybody yeah. loves him. <clears throat> um. Wesley Gleason said Submariner with the triangle head. No, that'd be the Golden Age Submariner. I am doing the Silver Age 1968 John Buscema uh, Submariner. 
Uh, Robert the Bruce for four ninety nine. Thank you, Robert. He says, "Hey, Aaron, Adrian Smith just uploaded a new process video to his YouTube channel. Grade A stuff. You won't like the music though. Hail G Money and Brohawk. Adrian Smith. Adrian Smith. I'm assuming what is that an artist? Must be right. So I'll have to check that I out. I'm familiar with Adrian. Thank Smith. you for the heads up. I will check it out because I've been I've been watching art videos like crazy lately. So uh, Spambot says, what about Bat Mariner? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Batman with, with, with ankle wings. Yeah, exactly. Um, wh wh where is it? I just, um, headless bourgeoisie says now Aaron has to do the leather next. No, I'm not doing the leather next. Billy Tucci was here. He'd do the leather next. I guarantee it. I always um, love the science behind those little tiny wings making, yeah. uh, allowing uh, name where to fly. Hey, whatever works, man. Yep. Let's see. He, those, I mean, those things must be like going like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like hummingbird. hummingbird. Yeah. Uh, Angela Curry for five bucks. Angela goes by many names. Today she's back to Angela Curry. This is Aaron. I've requested Shelby Robertson. He would be great. So get on it and ask him. Just make sure Kelsey is here. Shelby Robertson. The name sounds familiar. Who is that? Do you guys know? I that don't know name? who that is either. All right. I'm writing it down, Angela. I'm writing it down. I'll check it out. I know that name. Shell. I have requested. So, Aaron, you didn't write it down the first time. No, she <laughs> has to pay you now. To no, wait a minute. I think <laughs> now. I think this is her first request, right? No, she's saying I have requested. She is not saying I am requesting. Angela, I don't so, know what's going on here, but well, Angela, um... you know what's up. You have to. You have to pay Aaron. <laughs> That's right. To, to read. Pay attention to what you're saying. Uh, L. E. First Herald of Coomer's Gate says Shelby draws like Sylvester. <laughs> okay. First Herald. Okay. Tell us all about Coomer's Gate. I've yeah, I don't want to hear about it. I do not want to hear about it. Um, hey, there's Dan Lawless. Dan, do you want to come on and draw? I don't know why I want Dan on. He doesn't talk either. David doesn't talk and Dan doesn't talk. That doesn't help the show. <laughs> well, Dan's got his own uh, stream now. So that's he's, true. He's, you know, that's right. He's, he's got to be a better talker he'll now. Talk your era. Um, let's so see. Dan is so yeah. mellow, man. I feel high when I watch his show. I'm like, man, yeah, he talks so smoke. Yeah, so Dan, weed. Aaron's not kidding. He wants you to come on the show. Yeah, no, he's not. He's hardly. So can you send Dan the. Because he doesn't want to compete with me, so yeah, I know he he <laughs> feels the pressure. He probably just got up. He stays up late at night. Uh, Dale A says Shelby Robertson, American Discord did Ragitality, a number of covers for Zade Comics, etc. Worked for Liefeld back in the day. Okay, I'm getting my '90s education on. Still, yeah, still don't know who he is. Um, now they're talking about the weather in the chat. That's not a good sign. Oh my uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I have, uh, I've tried to get Kelly. Kelly said he'd come on and then he doesn't answer his messages. I can't get a hold of, um, uh, John Beatty. Uh, these guys don't check their messages. So I, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I can. Well, Aaron, maybe they do check their messages. No, because it shows when they check their oh, okay. messages. All and, right. <laughs> uh, I think, I, Kelly, I think has been like, he's just, he's like, it's like the Kelly Jones road show. He is like every weekend. It's like, he's at a show. I see posting stuff. So he just may not be around enough to, at this point to respond, but I will hit him up again. Uh, uh, Wizard I'm, Sleeves has, has just joined us. I I'm just want everyone to know. Want to know that Wizard Sleeves is now yeah. here. Yep. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's, let's do this real quick. Did you send Dan a, a link? I'm going to. Gosh, we get off my. Back. Well, see, I don't. I can't see your hands. I don't know what you're doing under the table. Well, oh. okay. I want. I want David to talk a little bit about fearsome while I send Dan uh, invite here. Hang on a second. All right, go ahead, David. Start talking. Fearsome is going to be one of the coolest comic books of the year. So y'all yeah. get in where you fit in. Uh, David, say that in your real voice. <laughs> Look, man, you need to get this book, you see? <laughs> I don't like bringing out this Geraldine voice. I'm trying to. Yeah, see, thank you. People, 
People need to know what you really sound like. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Well. <clears throat> no, but really, this is like a classic, fun Marvel esque um, adventure horror comedy. Everything that you probably liked about you know uh, 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 Marvel's take on uh, the Universal monsters and. Also, their their own original ones like Ghost Rider, and it has a little bit of uh, uh, um, Little Nemo and Slumberland, and it has all it has. It's just really layered. I think you guys are going to really like it, and it's just fun. It doesn't weigh you down with you know way too much dialogue like a Chris Claremont would be super verbose. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. it's going to be really really fun, and it has a really cool story of uh redemption you know um have you made uh, official the the future plans for this title um in, in terms of your your involvement okay well ethan did on his show so he wants to have this go on for about like six issues and i think he's going to write up until four and then i would take over writing from there and uh, David has uh, revealed to me his uh, story ideas, and they're awesome. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna but, have some cra craziness in there, and it's gonna be really fun. But he's gonna bring in Gabe to consult on the story, to make sure that he gets it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he go into a. What is it? Uh, 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 epileptic seizure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want you to know everybody in the chat is well aware of who Flip Wilson is because they uh, they got your Geraldine reference. So okay, good, 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 good. good. Um, I, I do want to um, before we get going here, let me um, let me let me uh, pimp my campaign as well, real quickly. Um, that David is done with this, by the way, at least the, the the preview book portion of this, and is only a couple pages from completion on the very first complete issue. So um, it's all up to coloring and lettering at this point and Ethan to get this sucker out. But uh, uh, everything that we've seen has just been it was a really, really good looking book. So you guys do not want to miss this. And also, if you're sitting there saying, well, I'll just wait till the actual book comes out and not get the preview book. This is going to have a bunch of David sketches and preview art in it that you're not going to get anywhere else. And it's print to order. So it's going to be very low print run and collectible. So yeah, it, yeah it'll be more collectible than, than the first issue. Right. So you guys probably don't want to miss if you can back this because you, you're not going to want to miss it. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I've had a really kind of uh, rambunctious week on Kit Carter. Uh, showing artwork always seems to help. Um, <laughs> well, when you talk about Kit Carter, you 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 go into this fifties lingo mode. <laughs> Rambunctious. A lot of tomfoolery going on in this yeah. one. Uh, there's yeah. Are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of shenanigans and tomfoolery going on. Um, mm -hmm. Some poppycock. So, that's right. <laughs> There's our tree monster. I did not pull a Gil Kane in you guys. I put the tree monster in the cut on the cover and he's in the book. So there you go. Um, anyway, so you have a hard cover option and a soft cover option. Chris Stevens, of course, provided the painted version here, which kind of gives it this old sort of uh, pulp feel to it, which I really kind of dig. Um, so you can get the soft cover or you can get the hard cover, which is signed numbered limited edition with my cover on it and has an art gallery. And you will find in that art gallery pieces well, there's actually some pages that you'll find in both books. Uh, Schmagma, Schmag, <laughs> Schmagma, the Lava Man will appear in the beginning of this book. Dan Lawless, of course, back cover art, very, uh, very um, Marilyn Monroe ish, sexy 50s pinup kind of thing. Where around. is Dan, by the way? I don't know, Dan. I put a, I put a link he in, up up in the chat and then he's, he was yeah, gone. <laughs> well, he, probably, he probably goes, Oh my gosh, I got to brush my teeth, take a shower. So anyway, um, you'll see this in the gallery section. Of course, that is colored by uh, the mysterious Kelsey Shannon. <laughs> and uh, Gary, of course, pencil-inked it as a tribute to the uh, Frazetta Buck Rogers covers of the uh, 50s. 
And this is one of the more expensive covers in that run. Like you get like a high grade. This is like a $50,000 book. Mm. It's nuts. Some of the other ones are like 3,500, you know, for like a nice higher mid grade book just for. Are all of Frazetta's covers jump in value? Um, yes and no. I mean, you can get the kind of average Frazetta thing. It's still reasonable, but these Buck Rogers covers for some reason. Yeah. They're iconic. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I mean, some of them literally a guy had a copy of this, the actual cover from this book that you're attributing here at San Diego last year. And it was like a seven or eight. Oh, I mean, it was a nice grade 55 grand. <laughs> I, just bought, I bought a seven Oh from one of the other ones that I really like for 3,500. So it was like, I mean, that is astronomical price difference. Yeah. And it's, it's just, some of them are rarer than others for some reason. And this is one of the most popular ones that Gary attributed there. That was going to be the original cover, but you know what? Now it's in the gallery. Uh, you can get t-shirts, black and teal with Kit and Merv on them. This uh, sketchbook will be quite defined. It's eight and a half by 11. And um, it has like a bunch of early Kit Carter art back when I was developing the, you know, the character and the, and the prints and stuff. And uh, I just discovered tons of it in my sketchbooks. I'm like, you know what? I'm putting it in there. And I'll throw in a few pencil pages from the book as well because people are demanding that now. So uh, mm -hmm. all sorts of good stuff you can get. This movie poster, that's why I've been painting to get warmed up to do this big uh, 14 by 36 insert movie poster that you can get. Uh, I'm really excited to get this because uh, I've always wanted my own movie poster, even if I have to do it myself. So there we go. And we're all assuming that you're going to make uh, Kit there a little more uh, hippie. A little more hippie? Oh, yeah. oh you know. There will there'll be curves, Gary. Be okay. Curves. Uh, I, I just, you know, want you to say it. <laughs> oh, you want me to say she's going to be more hippie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kit Carter laser etched shot glasses to, to the rest of the shot glass collection we've got going. Uh, stretch goals. We've got a ton of trading cards by me. Didn't and your mom etch those? Herself? No, actually, she did not, but she has packaged some. Oh, okay. uh, Garbage Man trades, Power Cube trades, second printing of Wraith of God 1, and the first printing of Wraith of God 2. All the covers are still available. All this stuff can be had on this campaign, along with a couple pieces of original art. I will be putting up some more original art later as soon as I get around to it. But there you go. Links are in the description for both of these campaigns, as well as Kelsey's, uh, even though we don't even know if he... If he if he has the powers of Bigfoot, he may have phased in and out. And he may be in another dimension right now. So hopefully, you know, eventually he'll be back to fulfill that campaign. Uh, but anyway, you'll find links in the description of this video for all of these wonderful projects. Um, Zombie Chow in the chat is asking a, an excellent question. Well, Zombie Chow, hang on one second, because we want to bring in one of our favorite people uh, all the way from the Midwest. Dan Lawless. There he is. Yo, can you hear me? We can hear you now. Uh, is that me? It's people applauding for you. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, like Gary's, uh, Gary. Yeah, I was like, my gosh, what's wrong with his mic? And it was Gary's sound effects. <laughs> uh, welcome, Dan. Thanks for coming in to help us out in the last second here. Yeah, hang on a second. Make sure. Okay. So, Dan, what's your what's your uh, preparatory regimen for for a live stream do you like do what i do and like put on deodorant and no that's that's what's great about this <laughs> it's not smell vision stinky i'm thinking that that people can tell you know so i was yeah yeah i usually I don't, you don't have to do that and if you if you have a hat you don't even need to to sharp it they don't worry about the hair either so <laughs> Yeah, don't, um, okay, don't I want it's on camera. Oh yeah, my gosh. gosh. <laughs> All right, hang on one that second. I want to make a quick, hang on, hang on a second. I want to make a quick announcement here and then we'll get going. Uh, because we're running out of time actually. Uh, Graham Nolan's daughter, uh, lost uh, her, her and her husband lost their apartment in a fire a couple days ago, lost everything. They're okay, um, but they lost everything. So, uh, Graham is doing a special uh, draw stream uh, auction thing tonight right after Graybeards. So he's going to be kicking it off at four o'clock. So uh, Pacific time, seven o'clock Eastern. So we've got about an hour gentlemen. Um, uh, Cause I don't want to stream over that. Cause I'm going to hop over there and help him out with that as well. So this will be a little shorter version of Graybeards, but let's get kicking on this.
so we can get something drawn. Dan, you have uh, you can draw anything from Marvel 1968 number ones, with the exception of Iron Man or Submariner. No, Silver Surfer. Oh, Silver Surfer. So you can't do Submariner or Silver Surfer, but anything else is uh, there was a first oh. issue in 1968. Wow. So Doctor Strange, Hulk, uh, Captain Hulk. Marvel with a green outfit, Captain America, uh, Nick Shield, Nick Fury, Agent of Shield. Nick uh, Shield, Agent Nick of Fury. Field, Agent of Fury uh, <laughs> and, and Captain Savage. I, and I like that Max, name. Nick I do. Shield. Nick Shield. Hmm. I actually like Agent, Agent of Fury. Fury. <laughs> I'm Nick taking Shield, that. Agent of Fury. I'm gonna, yeah. Zombie Chow says, does anyone know how much the shipping is for a hardcover to the UK? Really want the Kit Carter hardcover, but don't want to get slammed on shipping costs. Uh, it's ugly, man. It's uh, it's probably it's like, like 60 it's like, bucks. Yeah, I don't think it's that high, but it's probably like thirty-five or forty dollars. Unfortunately, I think it's more than that. If you check, if, if you go to my like, weight, if you go to the campaign and click like, oh, I want to buy this, and it takes you up there, just and it'll show you what the shipping to the UK is for it. So, and you don't have to order it. You can you can go through those steps without completing the order and find out what the shipping is before you order. But sure yeah, you no can, Aaron. Sure you can. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> All right. Uh, Angela Curry says, White Nick Fury. Yes, it would have to be White Nick Fury because that was a 1968 Nick oh, Fury. Oh, you don't like Nick Fury? <laughs> <laughs> Angela, you just offended David. Okay, here we go. I see how right, it is. Gentlemen. <laughs> Let's get cracking. Um, I so, do have Dan, do you, what are you drawing? I don't know. Maybe the Hulk. I don't know. Oops, I, don't who's, 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 I have available wrong. to me like a no silver surfer. There we go. You can't go wrong with the Hulk. I know, but I've drawn him yeah. too many times. I don't. I want to. What, well, what haven't I drawn? You have an open. You have oh, you know, Did screen. I? Uh, what about Mister Fantastic? You guys? You no, know, he no. said his own first yeah. issue. That's what he was Why not on the list. Dan, I didn't. I didn't bring you on here to cheat. That's what David's here for. <laughs> <laughs> I, wait, I'm missing this whole thing. I don't know what's going on. Do do. I, I never really know what's going on. What can I do? Captain Savage. Who's Captain Savage? Leather <laughs> do Iron Man. Gene He's Collins. on the list. Do Gene Collins Iron Man. Just play Gene Col yeah, with the rubbery armor. Yeah. Yeah, you can do Gene, Gene Collins Iron I Man. Draw, I want to draw a face. I want to draw a human. Doctor, okay, look, here you go. Captain Marvel with the green costume. Uh, Doctor Strange. Captain America. Uh, Nick Fury. Captain Savage and his leathernecks. <laughs> you got to throw in the leatherneck. The Hulk. And that's it. Those are your the, those are six. Okay. The other two are already taken. Silver Surfer and something. Maybe I'll try Hulk. Captain America then. Why not? Oh. I'm surprised no one has, has picked him yet. I know a lot of people in the chat want Captain America. Well, I'll want admit it. it. I want Captain America. I want a Dan Lawless Captain America. Oh, man. Well, you're going to get it. Then, the Dan will not disappoint. Um, okay. All right, you guys. So ready? I, draw. I have a I have a question that I that each of you can sort of answer and give me your opinion on. Um, I've been watching a lot of painting videos. And I was watching um, Jeff Watts, who uh, is a great painter, has a um, painting construction school. You can do it online down in San Diego, and both him and his he had his dad on, who apparently is an accomplished. Uh, commercial artist, and they both said the same thing. Now, you guys may remember, <laughs> I don't know why Gabe keeps coming up, but- um, Aaron, is this the camera you want? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, you. You whipped your head around and you had an expression on your face like you just got caught doing something. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. They both believe, as uh, Mr. LTA did, and we got in a pretty heated conversation one night, if you guys remember, Dan was there as well, oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. about... You could do anything. You could do anything. <laughs> if you're... Put yeah, your mind to it. These guys are, are of the same mind, though, that, they're, that talent is not something you're born with. It's something you cultivate. And I don't agree with that, but I, you do have to cultivate it, but I think you're born with it as well. And 
but he did the Jeff's dad did say this was I thought was really interesting. He felt the only real talent people have is the ability to, to see, to see what's wrong with the drawing and to understand what needs, you know, to fix it, to make it better. And some people he says can't see. And, you know, some people can, and it's the people that can are the ones I was like planet of the apes down there, Dan. Um, <clears throat> What am I doing? So no, I saw the top of your head. It was like yeah, it was like it was oh, kind shit. Of like a Planet of the Apes head or something coming in there. But it was just you hear it. it was scared there for a minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like to tilt this thing because I'm, I'm going to be drawing. I'll be like, yeah, Dan, you need a longer pencil so you can have some distance from the page. <laughs> That's it. Draw yeah, draw like that. <laughs> So, so Gary, I know you probably have an opinion on this. So we'll start with you. What do you? What I, do you no, I, I think the seeing part is is learned. I think that's something you acquire over years. I've never met anyone who had that ability, you know, out of the gate. I think I think it's something that you. An example of that is appreciating art, where you look at an artist and you. You know, it doesn't do anything for you at all. And then years later, you look at them again and you're like, whoa, why didn't I see this before? Well, but what about in your own work, though, the ability to kind of see where you're you're succeeding and failing in your own work? And, and well, I think that's what I mean by vision is that you that covers a lot of bases is that you're able to see what is good and what isn't good. And and that that you incorporate it into your own work. So so if you draw you know something that's that's pretty crummy, you, you are able to identify it right away, as opposed to your early years where you don't know that it's crummy. So, but do you are you of the mind that you are you are people are have a certain amount of God given talent, and then they are they cultivate that by hard work and practice. Or are you of the mind that you can take a, a thousand kids, put them in a room with a pencil and a paper, have them do the exact same thing and with the exact same instructors and they'll all be great by the time it's done? No, no, I, I completely disagree with that. I think people are, are, are born with different God-given abilities and what you do with those abilities, you know, separate you from the average person. David. How much, you know, like Michael Jordan was born with athleticism, but he became great by doing what? Spending well, hours and hours and hours in the gym. Right. Well, but that's that's the thing. I think people would would accept the fact that that physically people are born with gifts that other people don't have. Right. I mean. LeBron James is 6'8", 240 pounds, and has a 48-inch vertical. You know, he didn't just train to get that. I mean, he was born with that, right? Now, to become a great basketball player, you got to put the time in. But he still had the – and people accept that readily. But when it comes to art, there's 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 a section of people out there that think that, no, it's just a blank slate. And I, I wonder if that's sort of an evolutionary thought process but that, that drives that. But there's that thought process that, no – these are learned skills and you can all be great, but you know, we all think creative skills and, and athletic skills could be different. So, you know, yeah, we're talking why? About why would they be different? As like why musical would skills as an example would be the same because we're using sports analogies. Maybe that does not apply to creative. Uh, I think it's a little different. Yeah. But, but maybe I still not. Think, but yeah, I maybe. still think you're you're born with certain. Well, strength. yeah, but see, I would argue. And, why are you? Why would it be any different? Just we're talking about physical stuff as opposed to mental or whatever. Right. Uh, you want, but there's still parts of who you are. So why would one be inherent and the other one not? Yeah, is my point. Yeah. Um, but I've seen these. What 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 struck me was that especially. Uh, uh, Jeff's dad said that, you know, he's seen enough of it to know that that's what he believes. And it's like, well, yes, you can go to commercial art school and you can learn how to paint. Cause I think painting is more of a systematic sort of approach. Uh, but it's funny how 
you see a difference in people's drawing abilities because really what makes a great painting or any illustration is the drawing. Right. How good is the drawing? And then it becomes how good do you handle values? And then it becomes how good do you handle colors? Successful painting, right? right. So. Well, someone like Fra Frazetta, he didn't do that much work. He goofed around a lot. Yep. But all his uh, um, contemporaries couldn't touch him. Right. Yeah, that's, that's natural. That's right. natural. That's right. right. That's my point. Right. It's like yeah. it has to be, right? I mean, yeah. Now, I do think the natural can be enhanced, though. Right. And there are exercises. In other words, he was probably doing this stuff, you know, he was, he was doing exercises probably without really realizing it and training himself, you know, when he was younger and stuff. So, but I mean, yeah, there's, I think there's some kind of natural talent going on, but I do believe that you can, you can cultivate that. And that's one of the reasons I created that, that video about, you know, an exercise. There's some exercises you can do to help you actually increase your ability, just like lifting muscle, you know, lifting weights gets you bigger muscles. There are exercises that you can do in drawing that will, you know, increase your actual strength and yeah. your natural I mean, ability. It's like you know, talk about sports again, uh, golf, that all the stories that I've heard about great uh, golfers, PGA pros, is that they were way better than, than everybody their age group when they were young. Right. And so they, they target those people and say, okay, this person is gifted in this area. And then they, they work with them to develop right. because they, right. they've got something that the other guys don't have. Yeah. What's, what's something be, outside of sports that, that's, that you could also say is music. kind of a, yeah, music. You know, music. Mozart, I mean, what was he doing when he was, you know, four years old? Right. Exactly. Well, didn't he have a famous uh, 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 father composer kind of? That well, like, that's that's who identified his talent and and pushed him. Yeah, but that's part of it too. So you know, you're around the art. You're you know, like my mom was an artist, so it's you know, it, there's art around. It it sort of gets in you. Well, well, that's that's where the interest comes in because Mozart wasn't interested in music. Uh, but but here's the thing. I mean, I have two kids, right? They were both around me. I was drawing, you know, art all the time. My son is an engineer because his aptitude is more from Shelley's side, which is math and, you know, that sort of structured thought process uh, that I don't have. My daughter is very much artistic and not in, uh, although she's a good student, but <clears throat> is much different um, what they attach themselves to. And what this is interesting. A, an allergist, we have a lot of allergies in our family. So we've been to a lot of allergists and the guy said, what I thought was interesting, he goes, most people, if you're allergic to something, say it's peanuts or bananas, whatever, peanuts. that you don't like the smell of it, you don't like the taste of it. It's not like you, oh my gosh, I got to have peanut butter, and then you eat it and your face blows up. It's you don't like it. You don't like the smell of it because your body is naturally sort of resisting it, right? And in the same way, if you flip that to artistic ability or music ability or whatever, it's like... I think we're drawn to stuff that we are, you know, it, it's not just the exposure to being around an artist, but it's the fact that you are drawn to that innately because right. that's an ability that you have or that needs to be nurtured. So you gravitate towards that. That would be my take on that. Yeah. Um, well, out yeah. Of, out of, I'm one of eight kids and out of the eight, only two of us went to art. Hmm. Now, so you what do you have a brother that's an artist or a sister or what? Yeah, a, a, you know, graphic or a industrial designer. So. Oh, industrial designer. So he was smart and actually got a real art job yeah. that uh, like paid money. While well, the rest of us yeah. are like dummies. Um, I just, I just think it's an interesting. Oh wait, isn't that? Yeah. You know that that there's that sort of viewpoint. And I think it's because I can. I'm not going to name any names because I I don't want to do that and you know insult somebody, but. There are people out there that are really good finishers, you know, that have learned painting technique or, you know, Photoshop or whatever and can really do a fit. But their drawing is really subpar. Yeah. So yeah. They use photo reference or whatever to make up for that. And then they have really good finishing techniques, which leads me to believe that learning to paint, for example, is something that anybody can learn to do really proficiently. But it's that drawing. It's that fundamental 
drawing that makes a great painting or not, right. if you're not using photo reference, right? If you're just drawing out of your head, so you're going for Zeta style. Uh, it's that drawing ability that makes the difference, right? Why is Frazetta better than Ken Kelly? Ken Kelly learned his painting technique, but Ken Kelly doesn't draw as well as Frazetta did. But I think it, I think color is on that, along those lines as well. Yes, understanding seeing color that's also yeah. artistically the same. I don't think it's much different than drawing. To the truth, what color? I think I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying the the uh, it's still the same talent uh, rules apply with drawing as the, with coloring. Don't you think though that color I don't, I, know, I don't think it can be learned as you're saying. No, I, I think color. Yeah, color is a a a a, a creative craft in its yeah. own. Well, yeah. okay, there is an intuitive nature to color. I agree, yeah. but don't you think that there's also a mathematical component? Like the, it, like orange and blue are complementary colors, right? And there are certain ways that you know if you put this color next to this color, it'll do this. That you can learn that. True. Sure. But but the, your choices, how you see when it, color, when art, yeah, when it, when it comes you know, to art. there's a lot of, of creative ways of using color. And, and and I'm like that. My coloring isn't that great. And I see someone that's very creative in, in color. You know, what Dan, oh, sorry. What was that? I was getting ready for a, a super chat. Uh, the Wait, way what Dan, you guys got oh, for a super chat? What is it? Your rubber ducky? <laughs> the way Dan uses color. Um, he he yeah. makes choices that, that wouldn't even occur to me. And and that I think that's what Dan is talking about. It's it's a, a creativity that that I do not have that Dan has. Well, that's the thing though that I see Dan do color, and I'm like, I would never do that. So it's a different. I don't know, of... you guys. I remember being in art school and, and doing and working on some color piece, and the art teacher coming up going, "You don't understand color." <laughs> <laughs> nice so, well, <laughs> No, but you're 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 breaking out. You know what I mean? It's like there there's the old saying, and it's so true. You can't break the rules until you know the rules. And once you know the rules, then you know what you're doing when you're breaking them. You're not breaking them out of ignorance. Yeah. You're breaking them saying, out of knowledge. Studying, that's what you're doing, right? In, in studying color, though, I had to, I had to learn it. And I, I, I looked at other paintings. And I, you know, you learn what's cool looking and how colors go together. I just, you know. So, yeah, right. I feel like it, it uh, it's really a learned thing. But it, it's still that, it's that you know, knowing when to put things where, when. It's, it's just that's kind of a, in the heart, you know. No. Uh, Robert the Bruce for two dollars says Dan has to set his work on fire to be an official beard. So, <laughs> Dan, Dan, are you prepared to? Uh, are you get ready to light your artwork on fire. What is what is wait, what is the history of, of the of the, the flaming uh, artwork? Kelsey was was uh, not happy with the piece he was working on, and and he he got creative. He was uh, you know, oh. burning. He set it on fire. fire. Have have others in, it, in the it in made the it here better. Uh, also yeah. achieved this. It, was, it, was it made it better. It, it was at the behest of the chat. Yeah, they he yeah he got sort of uh, pressured into it. I think they were chanting him on, and he was like, "Yes, burn, baby, burn!" It was like Burning Man, you know. He just yeah, it doesn't take much for Kelsey to <laughs> hey, Kelsey do this. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, poor old Kelsey. We barely knew him. Oh. <laughs> What's that? What's that? What's that old saying? Uh, how does that go? Um, something. Uh, Give us we, a hint. We hardly yeah. knew you. Something, something, something. Something. We hardly something. something. No, we hardly knew you. But it, who was the name? Is an old saying. There's the name attached to it. Uh, now let's see, Horatio. There's more things in heaven and earth than that's something else. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> I give up. I give up. Clock um, went out. I was watching. Your, your uh, I'm sorry, Dan. Go ahead. I said the clock went out on the comment there. You got. Yeah, yeah. You had to. You have a timer to get this. Yeah, that's there. right, man. If you can't pull a joke out in like uh, 30 <laughs> seconds, you're you're off. Well, we need I a gong. Been, been watching silent films lately, and, and I'm on a uh, Charlie Chaplin kick, and and I love some of the stuff that they do that is kind of lost. And I want to bring back some of these things. And it's like when. Um, Snapping your fingers could be an insult. <laughs> what? Was it? Was it? So, you know, when you snap your fingers, you know, if you're doing it like to the beat of music, you're just kind of, you know, that's what people know. But when you do it like this, it's an insult. 
So if you do walk up to, you know, somebody says something you don't like and you go. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Dan, you thought my was bad? <laughs> what the heck? I don't even know what he's I'm talking about. I'm just laying down some groundwork for uh, some future. All right. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. What in the world are you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Um, if I draw the Silver Age Submariner, I can still draw the Golden Age Human Torch coming in from the... Uh, what are you? Wait, you're still deciding? Halfway into it? What's that? You changing the rules halfway into it? Well, no, I'm doing this. I'm drawing the sub. So, uh, so Dan can draw like a Captain America with, with a Conan behind him? Well, I guess he wants to as long as you include. <laughs> okay. You know. Do you hear that? Well, no, no, wait a minute. Conan wasn't around in comics in 1968, so no, he could not. But he could, he could draw like Modoc back there if he wanted to, right? As long as Cap is in the drawing. What the Am I getting paid for this or what? No, I don't know, right? <laughs> I'm not trying to make your job more. Gary's trying to make your job more difficult, Dan. I'm simply saying what you're allowed and not allowed to do. And how am I making it more difficult? Well, I you're think adding Dan characters wants... to his drawing. No, he Dan wants to draw Conan. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Dan, I mean, he had to erase the sword out of, of Cap's hand. <laughs> oh, See, man. There you go. See that? Are we all like, are we See, all closet barbarian fans? Is that? Dan, like that, that might be a first. Captain America with a sword. <laughs> I'm like over it. it. I like it. I mean, it's he's too got, late now. Yeah. He's you got, can't, I'm, I'm way over here in Michigan. You can't get me. <laughs> That's right. Dan can do whatever he wants. I mean, he is gracious enough to come on the show last That's second. Right. Now, who are we to oh, make demands exactly. on him? Yeah, beggars no. can't be choosers, you know. That's uh. right. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Well, he's already got the Conan boots going on. Yeah, that's true. Isn't that funny how uh, Conan actually ended up with the same boots that Captain America had, just different yeah. color? Yeah, that became like the... the comic book uh, uh, language, the Buccaneer boots. Yeah. Kind of flipped over. And it really made me mad when I was a kid because I wanted I, you know, you'd want your mom to make you like a superhero costume and they can never do the boots. It's like, how do they do those boots? Uh, I used to do the uh, pretend the boots where I would have socks and I'd just flip them over and they would look like you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised that you did that? <laughs> hey, this guy uh, dressed as Spider-Man at a con and went and bugged Stan Lee. So you know, <laughs> headless bourgeoisie. Yeah, is saying Dan should add the wizard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard, of course, was the Golden Age speedster of Marvel Comics. He was the wizard. Uh, not sure that. That name would hold up today, but uh, or at least would have a different meaning. Yeah, uh, wizard sleeves says not wizard sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> wizard sleeves says Cap held an axe once and hammer. Did Cap hold a hammer in the comic book? Yes. Well, no. Wait a minute. That was an amalgam thing, wasn't it? That doesn't, Whoops. Yeah, that doesn't count. Sorry. Yeah, I don't think he he never lifted Thor's hammer in the comic for real. Yeah, that's what I was asking. I don't I don't remember that happening. Yeah, he did. Man, in the comic book. Okay, yeah. chat. Uh, help us out here. Did Captain America ever hold Thor's hammer in a comic book? <laughs> in love. <laughs> Check the back computer. <laughs> All right. Marcus Killigrew will know. You watch. He's going to have the answer. No matter man says Aaron's like seven years old. You can play with me, but you have to follow my rules. That's exactly right. And uh, armor glitch. I'm saying that wrong. Rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> I was talking about artistic rules, not uh, rules for this show. When rules on this show are broken, that is what we call cheating, David. <clears throat> 
Jack Elmy says so many rules. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm I'm detecting a motif here, Aaron. You guys, I just try to run. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And Art of Roy says Gary's just too lazy to look for the remote. Uh, yep, you're right. Okay, Dale A says, yep, Thor number 390. In your face. Okay, well, Aaron. Yes. Could you look that up for us, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gary, why don't I just do that? I got nothing else to do. Um <laughs> Well, you don't have to, but you uh, know. yeah, sure I don't. Th what number three ninety eight? Um, three ninety. Thor three ninety. Okay. Um, okay. Wait a sec, uh, Henry Jermex says, "Yeah, Cap lifted Thor's hammer in the Ron Friends run of Thor." In yo. Well, hold on there, David. Calm down, David. I ain't I ain't calming down, Bush. All right, now yeah, hang glitch, on a second because glitch, I, uh, no, wait a minute. Uh, 1988 I, I got, Thor 390 glitch. Set I've got some questions about this image right here. He's got the U.S. agent gear on, but that's Steve Rogers. I've got a flash for you, Mister. There's plenty one man can do if he's the right man. This is almost unbelievable. Somehow I'm able to lift Thor's hammer while others far stronger than I couldn't even budge it. Only Steve Rogers would think that. So, US so is that is or is that not Steve Rogers? I well, U.S. agent was kind of a thuggish kind of dude. He wouldn't have had that sort of a moral thought in his head. So I'm going to say that's Steve Rogers, although I can't remember why he was dressed as U.S. agent. And I think U.S. agent became Captain America. I don't know. But yeah, Marcus Killer is saying that is indeed Steve. All right, uh, the chat Cap had right. that before U.S. agent, Paul Taylor. So everybody's on board with this. Okay, so okay, David. That was yes. the first character I drew was USA. David, I, I, I'm I'm gloating. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Well, let's David see. Is, David is right once again. This was what 88, 89. Yeah, I was kind of. I wasn't reading that religiously back then, so. Uh, yeah, I can't be held responsible for not knowing stuff you know, that didn't happen in the seventies in comics. Yeah, U.S. Agent was the first issue, uh, first super I drew for Marvel, I believe. Really, really. I mean, wow. I did, I did Cloak and Dagger, but, but I'm talking about like super sort of traditional superhero. Hmm. So I was, uh, it was my inter my introduction to the, the SJW stuff because it was, <laughs> it was written by Fabian Nicienza. Mm -hmm. and, Fabian, nice to see you. That's what I used to. Yeah, say. and the villain was a. A guy who was a, a Texan. He was a, he was a Texan who had a Dallas Cowboy helmet on. He had a Howard Davidson jacket, and uh, I'm not sure why this, but a Grateful Dead T-shirt okay. and an AR-15, and he was shooting little kids coming across the border. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I was like, I got this story. Yeah, like, this is that? so grim. Man. But yeah, that was it, and wow. uh, it was really heavy. It was really serious. And you know, yeah, because those guys like that, they actually so, think. Conservatives do that kind exactly, of yeah. exactly. I was just going, oh gosh, but you know, whatever. What? Okay, but the, how does the Grateful Dead T-shirt factor? I don't know. I can't. I could never figure that one out. I mean, it's clearly someone who doesn't even know his. Own. It's like yeah, it's like they're making it up. Like yeah, it's like they oh, knew somebody or something. But he's like, a Grateful Dead fan. That gives him like depth. Because you know, like, I thought Grateful Dead was kind of hippie. You know, not you know, what wasn't it was kind of what you call. Um, or something, but John Smith clears something up. He says it was when the government took Captain America mantle from Steve, he became the captain. Okay. And he took well, yeah, he gave up his red, white, and blue for the the red, uh, uh, white, and black, the, the Nazi colors. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they have been wanting to make him into a Nazi from the start. I think you know. I guess so. We can't have these, uh, you know, conservative uh, superheroes running around with '40s ideals. Can't have that. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Marcus. You called that first. Of course, I should have, you know, scrolled, scrolled up. But yeah, Marcus, you gotta give him credit, man. Marcus, yeah, Gary, Gary, yeah, you I have know. one job. I, hey, I'm. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, fasting just, hey, just <laughs> I'm fasting up. I'm calling out. Mar just Marcus. assume Marcus got it right. They just then you're well, probably going to be right. It. You know, I didn't see it. I'm yeah. Just, I'm just saying from in the future, just like just Marcus got that one. Just you don't have yeah, to yeah without seeing it. Okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Marcus got it, and who else? And you're probably right about you know eighty percent of the time. Yep. And you know that's I guess eighty percent is better than you know seventy. Um, no, Geek Avengers, they understand uh, we cleared that up. He did in fact lick Thor's hammer in the comic book. You know, I also want to point out something uh, completely unrelated, but it is comic book related. Um, there is a contingency of Washington people in the chat. <laughs> That want me to go to the uh, Washington State SummerCon. I have reached out to them uh, like a week ago. They have not got back to me. So if I can only go if they want me there. So um, if I'm not there, it's because it's not because I didn't try. So I want everybody to know that. Well, Aaron, they you know they have to work their way down the list. He's <laughs> <laughs> left. <laughs> They gotta say, well, we got uh, 15 more people that have to say no first, Aaron, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. see now, how do you think I feel? <laughs> Always getting invited the last right second. Like, have we do we have anybody else? Do we have anybody else for the show? No, we want to see. Oh my God. Is there anybody oh, out there yes, that can like, draw? Oh, we need a you know? Hey, Dad, like, please. Is this like no, a, hey, a, no, hang on a second now. Back in the green room, you guys, I said, I we should reach, I should. Try and get Dan Lawless. I said that, but then I saw Anakin Eudofia, who we haven't had on the show yet. And I thought, well, this is a perfect chance for him to jump in. And uh, he couldn't handle the pressure uh, this week. So then I thought, then you showed up in the chat. I was like, Dan's the man. He'll do it. Dan yeah, will do Dad, it. Absolutely. Uh, Dad's did a pop culture. He asks a, a uh, <laughs> relevant question. Will Gary now make a fake call to Aaron pretending to be from the convention? <laughs> <laughs> you just ruined the opportunity. Yeah, we're going to give you room and board. We're going to we're actually going to pay you a, an appearance fee. Oh my gosh, Gary would do that too, and I would show up, and they'd go, "You're not on the." And I'm like, "Oh, he did it to me again." Yeah, who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, the only buddy. thing we can't pay for is the flight. Can you get down here? <laughs> yeah, we'll give you. Yeah, we'll pay pay for your expenses when you arrive. <laughs> well, you're overdue, Gary, for one of those. Uh, uh, I don't think you practical are, jokes on Aaron. No, I think Aaron. Uh, Aaron suffered enough. Yeah, oh, okay. boy, I really have. At the hands of Gary, uh, it's been. Uh... The question yeah. is, what do the people want? That's what's <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Spam do a poll. Boss, uh, Aaron, do spam. a poll uh, in the chat. <laughs> Hey, that reminds me, you guys is... watching right now, uh, we're almost 200 strong. If you guys saw my poll posted on Twitter, because we had the lowest output of voting, David is under the impression that uh, Twitter is doing um, strange things to our, uh, our feeds. So if you guys saw the poll for this week's Graybeards, type a one in the chat right now. I just want to get an idea of... You're How trying many to get a hit count. I actually saw that. Okay. Uh, uh, let me read Spambot before they start doing that. Uh, poor Gary Martin was begging to draw on the stream this week, but Aaron chose Dan first. Yeah. Well, I gotta, I, we got to, we have maintained quality on this show. <laughs> Ellie, first herald of Coomersgate, $5. Now you got, now got a joke coming, Gary. That, okay, that, yeah, that, that, <laughs> Right. I would like a Gary Martin corn dog update. Did he ever find the golden corn dog? He said, "I'm talking to him right now." <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you you just got the green light with that comment, so you you're you're free. You yeah, I, I'm I'm filtering, trying to decide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think I'll just take the high road and say uh, I've not been to that deli. Since that incident, I think I'm going to stay away from that deli. That's I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> now, Gary, I am sort of curious. This whole corn dog thing is—is um, is this a uh, 
are, are, are you, you, you brought up the story of the old man you saw in the, uh, the grocery store. Right. About how he told his wife he was out of corn dogs. Low. Low on corn dogs. Are you, is that, I mean, are you a guy that would, are you, are you that corn dog heavy? That you no, 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 no. I mean, that's why I found that curious that he didn't say out. He said low. So he was worried <laughs> that he would run out. But clearly you're a corn dog guy or you wouldn't have gone to, to get well, one. Well, that, hearing that conversation got me in the mood. I see. <laughs> so I went over to the deli, went over to the deli to check him out. And boy, was I disappointed. Uh, <laughs> so did that... Did that cure you, or is it kind of like now you're kind of like more? I've got to find some place with a decent corn dog. It it put me off corn dogs for a while. Okay. <laughs> but all what this, is the story? I mean, some all of this, this yeah. talk about corn dogs is is kind of you know. I, I'm thinking next time I make a run, then I'll. Um, some of us in the audience yeah, may not Dad, know Dad, what you guys are talking about. Dad's Den says, uh, old men talking about corn dogs gets Gary in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on a second, guys. I'll be right back. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gary went in and terrorized some uh, young lady with purple hair uh, about the, the state she of the corn dog. Have, she was. wasn't young and she didn't have purple hair. Well, she acted like she was young and had purple hair. True. Um, there's several people in the chat saying they did not see the poll. Hmm. And I retweeted okay. it multiple times. Um, okay. So, okay. Next week, you guys, for you guys in the chat and also you guys, meaning Gary and uh, uh, David, uh, and of course, Dan, if you happen to see it, um, when we put the poll up, retweet it like crazy because, um, apparently people, I, I, we only had like 80 some people vote and we usually have wow. like close to 300, a really? couple of hundred. Yeah. So, Interesting. Uh, uh, Omer glitch is asking me, Dan, you drew barbed wire at dark horse. Yes. Yep. Agents of law and barbed wire. Okay. I, I inked, um, a Chris Warner Bob Wire issue. Oh, okay. I love Chris's stuff. It was the the movie adaption. Did it look like Pamela Anderson or just kind of like No, it did. I mean he he um he was pals with Pamela. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. he went to her house. Oh, really? she wanted, yeah, she wanted um to know all about the character. And so they since well, she asked me. Since yeah, since Chris um, created the character, they said Chris. <laughs> and Chris, yeah, it's like I want to go. <laughs> yeah, they go. said Chris to, and and he visited her at her house, and and she was looking at you know his his uh, his stuff. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, David. And she was impressed with um, his stuff. His the stuff. Bob Wart. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what you know what happened. The, the uh, dark horse people called me up and and said, "Hey Dan, do you know there, there's a, the Cannes Film Festival?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. Well, um, there's one. They have they have those pre-party things, you know, for the you know the Pamela Anderson's is going to be there, all that kind of stuff. They're going to for the new movie and stuff." I'm like, "Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> keep like, going. You want you want to draw the invitation?" <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and I did after I. <laughs> <laughs> After I was dejected, yes. well, you know what? You, you can't go, but you can draw the invitation. <laughs> You're not invited, but you draw the invitation. Thanks yeah. a lot, man. And now this Chris Warner's going over to her house. What the oh heck? Oh my gosh! I'm well, not doing anything yeah. right, man. Kids wish yeah, it's like it Aaron. Comics. We're having a big comic book convention in Portland, and we were wondering. Do you know anyone that would like to <laughs> <laughs> Do you know happen to know anybody that'd like to be a guest? Yeah. Uh, um, so anyway, Chris Warner was showing her his designs for the character, and she was so impressed with the Bob Wire and tattoo design. <laughs> she, and what happened next? What happened next? He got a, tat a Bob Wire tattoo on her arm. Mm. 
And so to this day, you see photos of her. She's got that stupid Bob Wire tattoo on her arm. <laughs> but it's designed Wait, Chris by... Warner's art? Chris Warner's yeah. art. Mm -hmm. Wow, how cool is that? Yeah. But that's yeah. So we yeah, I, uh, he was Wait, no, they use my they use my artwork to sell that thing to Hollywood. And Chris Warner gets the tattoo. Yeah, and the house. She, house. Was, the was that how she got hepatitis? <laughs> <laughs> David, where are you coming from? <laughs> yeah, man, gotta, she got hepatitis. When you got, when you get those taps. How man, do you man. know that? <laughs> it was in the news. What news? David, the Hollywood news. David's all over that stuff. Uh, oh, okay. See, I don't read the Hollywood news, so I don't. <laughs> David used to be a player down there. <laughs> Uh, Robert the Bruce says, I'll definitely retweet the post I never see. <laughs> well, you guys will have just remember, like on Monday, uh, sometime like Monday evening, go to my feed on Twitter, go to my page, and it'll be there, you know, and then you can kind of grab it and retweet it if it doesn't show up in your feed. Always remember, oh, Graybeards this week, better check the poll on Aaron's page. Daniel Russell says, uh, between Aaron's man thing. And Gary's burnt corn dog. This show is going downhill. <laughs> what do you mean it's going? Going. I know, right? Gone, oh, brother. It's gone downhill. Yeah, I got news for you, man. It was corn dogs, plural. <laughs> but that doesn't make his uh, innuendo any better. Oh, Lord. Okay. Well, I'm so I guess I'm not helping anything, apparently. While we have a lull, I want to share something. Uh oh. I was digging uh, through my but a box of stuff. I was looking for a um, a referee whistle. Couldn't find it, so you guys are spared for a week. Okay. <laughs> and I okay. found this um, letters page that I framed years and years and years ago. You can see it's it's turning yellow. Reason why I framed it. It was the first time I was mentioned in a letters column of work that I did at, as a professional artist. It was uh, for the Flash. Mm. Wait, 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 uh, hang on a second. What did you? What did you? Give us the issue and who is the penciler? Um, Carmine Infantino was the penciler. Now, and, were you doing backgrounds or you do the whole thing? No, I have full inks. Okay. Um, and two year old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, uh, the flash ish issue uh 326 so that goes like mid 80s it was you know back there so this is the first time i was mentioned by name in a letters column um one guy comments the art in uh 326 was amazing I love the work of Gary Martin on Carmine Infantino's pencils. Please keep him as a regular on the book. The well, very sign, next sign the very Gary's mom. Yeah. <laughs> Gary's mom. The very next comment is is dear editor. Ernie Colon was the editor at the time. That's why I got the job because I was friends with Ernie. Mm -hmm. There was only one thing I didn't like about Flash 326. Dennis Jensen didn't do the inking. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Ah, well, you was short lived. It was short lived. Yep. Oh. So bring me on the mountaintop and then wish me <laughs> off. <laughs> Such is the world of comics, isn't it? Yep. So your mom's letter didn't help. Damn. <laughs> Best hmm. age comics with an X. I learned Gary Martin by name when I saw your art on Steve Lytle on Doom Patrol back in the day. That's that's true. I inked Doom Patrol over Steve Lytle. That's right. That was uh, – didn't he – didn't you have to tell a story where he stuck you with having to do some backgrounds or something because he didn't oh, want to do the research? Big time. <laughs> You're Gary he was one of these guys – like, <clears throat> yeah, he was one of these guys that his – initial enthusiasm motivated him to do his best work and so when he was motivated his work was brilliant but then he would run out of gas really quickly and 
hand jobs over to assistants where they would do the layouts. And so <clears throat> the first issue of Blue Death, I'm sorry, of, of Doom Patrol, we had a, uh, a four month lead time mm. because it was, you know, already put on the schedule. Yeah. And he was starting with issue number one. And it took him four months to draw it. Ugh. So by issue number two, we were already behind schedule. Wow. And then he 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 did probably full pencils on about half that issue. And I I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I think maybe five was five or six was Steve's last issue, and then they had to they fired him because he, he couldn't keep the schedule. Yeah. And he was doing <clears throat> really rough layouts and I was doing finishes, but I wasn't, I wasn't getting paid to do finishes. I was just getting paid my regular inking rate. So that's, that's another story. But if he's he, working four months he, on an issue. How can he even make a living? It's not. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, he was living in Kansas city at the time and they have a famous um, train station there. And he, wanted to feature the train station he wanted doom patrol's headquarters to be in kansas city so he had a big panel where he drew the train station but he only drew a, a sketch of it and he wanted me to finish it so he sent me photographs of <laughs> the train station and the yeah, train station is a very iconic building um if you know kansas city you see it you know you know what it is immediately and i still see like any films that feature Kansas City, they show the train station and then it's like, ah, I hate that. <laughs> it's probably complicated as heck too, right? I mean, oh, absolutely. It's a very old building, a uh, very distinct architecture with lots of uh, arches and, you know, that kind of stuff. Were you, were you new enough at the time that you were just like, oh, I can't complain about this. I just got to Oh, no, it. I complained. But, oh, okay. um, the official word from my DC editor was, quote, as far as we're concerned, Steve Lytle is is drawing sufficient pencil art for you to ink. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and so I, I at that point I thought, okay, I have to start looking for another gig, but you know, I have to keep inking this so I can get a paycheck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the the lovely side of DC Comics. Yeah. Hmm. As far as we're concerned, these stick figures are... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what he was saying. So if you start looking at Steve's later issues, and, and I can't remember which ones, which issue was his last. It, it might be five. The artwork in it is is very inconsistent. Um, some of some of the pages look great, and that's Steve's full pencils. And some of it looks crappy. That's my finishes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, you know, it's funny. Along those same lines, when we were doing sludge together, um, I would that's, do... That sentence sounds funny if you don't yeah, see it. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell is that? Excuse me. Yeah, will you elaborate on that? So we were working on the comic book called Sludge. For Thank you. There we go. Um, what I started doing was, uh, because I was trying to keep a deadline, there was a lot of work, and there was a lot of urban stuff, so a lot of buildings and things like that. And what I did was... I started doing them in blue line, right? Because I would do all the, the grid and stuff and I'd do the buildings in blue line, but I wouldn't finish them in pencil. And I asked Gary, I said, can you just ink these from the blue line? And he was kind of like, <sighs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but I still drew them. I just didn't do. I forgot about that. You son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We didn't have scanners back then, right? So we were still making Xeroxes of the artwork. Right. And yeah. So yeah. I would make Xerox of the pages to send to Gerber, and the blue wouldn't show. So he didn't think I was drawing any backgrounds, and he thought Gary was doing all the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, he, and I, I did not uh, uh, correct him on that either. Yes, uh, Gary. Gary's that way. He'll take credit wherever he can. 
Uh, Robert the Bruce for four for four ninety nine. Aaron, listening to the bros talking about Mignola and his style, was it something he always wanted to do, or a product of a shorthand to make deadlines? This is what I know, and this is from what uh, Mike actually told me one of the few times he talked to me. Uh, was that he he's a big Wrightson fan, and he wanted to to be like Bernie Wrightson and do all this detailed work, and he realized that he couldn't do it. <laughs> and so he was trying to figure out a style that he could do, that he felt good about, right? And so what he did was he took, and again, this is what he told me. Um, what he did was he, would, he took tracing paper and started putting it over Frazetta paintings and blocking out where all the blacks were in the, um, in the painting and that through that he developed this sort of graphic style that he then developed into his own thing. I've never heard this. Interesting. So yeah. that, according to Mike, is the uh, origins of his rather unique—well, not rather, but very unique and uh, popular style. Yeah. yeah. The first time I saw it was uh, Corum. I thought it was really good. I still think that that work is good. Yeah. yeah for first comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, even when he was doing like Rocket Raccoon and he was doing more of a, you know, detailed. That was kind of in between yeah. Rosetta and his current style. Right, but he was still trying to do the line work and stuff. And, and right. like I said, according to him, he was just kind of like, I, he just didn't feel that he could do it. He was that kind of a guy that could emulate the kind of stuff that Wrights and, yeah. and Frazetta were doing. Yeah. So he just took the, you know, what, what is really important stuff is the black placement, which creates the volume in your work. Right. right, the line work is just eye candy, but it's pl black placement that creates volume and makes your the stuff contrast, really yeah. interesting. Interesting, yeah. So, uh, once again, yeah. Marcus comes through. Thank you, Marcus, for that tidbit. Uh, number five was uh, Lytle's last issue, and then Mr. Larson took over. Eric Larson, yep. Oh, I don't remember Lytle's that. last issue. That's when I first met Eric Larson when he first started that book. Uh, Steve Leolea was kind of hung out with Eric in their studio with Al Gordon. And at a show, Steve came up to me and said, You know, you are saving Eric's uh, pencils. And I'm like, Oh, thanks, Steve. That's the best compliment you could have given me. <laughs> Wait a minute. You were inking Larson? On. Doom Patrol. Oh, mm -hmm. really? Okay. So Lytle got canned. You stuck around. I stuck around, and then I quit after a while. He's like, now, I can't take this shit no more. He's out, I mean, <laughs> was it, were you just, was it the, uh, how should I say this? Was there any reason beyond the fact that you just wanted to move on to her book, or were you, was it because of what the editor had done to you, and you were always looking for something else, or was it just a dead title in your mind, or? Why did you quit? No, none of those things. Um, it was a combination of the penciler and writer. Uh, our beloved Paul Kupperberg was writing it. Oh, well, there you so go. Enough said, right? Yep. Well, we've been down that road, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, so I told this story. Paul Kupperberg wrote a, a storyline in. Doom Patrol, where they're introducing a, a new Doom Patrol character, and he was like some street punk with, you know, superpowers, and how he introduces him was, uh, he's in a shopping mall, he's wearing, you know, he's got a mohawk and a nose ring and a leather jacket, and he's walking through an indoor uh, shopping mall, he walks into a store, and he's he picks up something, and he's looking at it, and, and because of his look i'm doing quotes <laughs> the the proprietor of the store thought he was a shoplifter and started yelling stop thief and he took off running security guards in the shopping mall see him running out of the store and hear the shopkeeper saying stop thief and they pull out their guns and start blazing away <laughs> <laughs> wow. this is in a crowded shopping mall <sighs> This is that's like vintage uh, uh, Paul Kupperberg. Oh my god! Am I saying? 
Yeah, I get the the, the Paul and Alan mixed up. That's Paul, right? Well, Paul was the editor slash writer. Right, Alan, right. Uh, okay, Paul, yeah. Alan was a writer too, though, wasn't he? Okay. Or was he an artist? Was he, he, was a, he was no, he was a he was a penciler. Okay. Um, so I thought that that whole scenario was so ridiculous. I was going to test the editing at DC, and I erased all the little, you know, security guard revolvers that they were shooting at this guy. And I replaced them with uh, 44 Magnums. I gave one guy an Uzi. (laughs) 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 Just, you know, exaggerate the absurdity of the whole thing. And when the comic came out, those guns were still in it. The editor didn't see what I had done. Oh, did so anybody an after early... the fact come up to you? Pardon? Did anybody after the fact come up to you and say no? Oh. No one ever said anything. So in the uh, Doom Patrol world, in the shopping mall, uh, security security guards have Uzis, <laughs> <laughs> and they use them. Pop <laughs> lifters. Oh, oh my! Gosh. That's amazing. I think that would curve the shoplifting in that story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't you know we've caught Magnum we, Uzis? We open up with crazy with, with automatic weapons on you. Right. You'll never shoplift in this town again, kid. So that might have been. Uh, Marcus, you can correct me if I'm wrong. That might have been the first Eric Larson issue. I could be wrong. So. We might be talking about issue number six of Doom Patrol, six or seven, um, where I I made that uh, switcheroo with the weaponry. You know, it's amazing how many uh, stories you hear of guys doing that because they're ticked at their editor or for whatever reason, right? And uh, it just never gets caught. It just shows you these guys are just, you know. No, they don't. They, they don't. don't. They, they just don't. traffic. Yep. I mean, they may read the script, but I mean, that's the thing. It's like someone okayed that script, right? Someone right. Read, yeah. read that script and went. They said it, yeah. So, sure. Yeah. It's every because everything's done by committee. And so, like, yeah, that's okay. They're like, "There's drawing on this page. Go." Yeah, <laughs> say that. Exactly. <laughs> the whole shopping mall thing is kind of boring. Oh, security guards. Shooting at shoplifters. Oh, that'll make it exciting. <laughs> you know, that's what I would do. <laughs> so exactly. this character like runs out of the, the shopping mall and he's on the streets. And a, apparently there's like all points bulletin helicopters and cop cars are all like for a shoplifter. And, yeah. They're all trying to track him down. And he, he runs around a corner into an alley and ends up, you know, meeting the villain for the issue. And we never see the helicopters or the police again. Uh, they just disappear. Uh, Marcus says, looks like uh, it was number six, issue number six. Thank you, Marcus. Well, I've said this before. When I was working on Tachyon, and we were on it for a while and uh, together, and... I was the editor was telling me to rewrite the script. <laughs> and I was like, are you gonna defend me if I oh, oh yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. I got you, you know. Did he offer to pay? <clears throat> no, he, he wasn't like not like sit on the typewriter, but yeah, when you get this oh, as you're drawing it. To- you're drawing it, change it, make it better, make it more exciting, make it this, make it that. And and uh the last issue we worked on was issue number seven, and it was I had this big Godzilla monster in it. And the whole sequence was so. See, Aaron, you worked on it longer than I did, as you recall. I got canned. Yes. Um, I, I, it t- the funny thing is, it took me five issues to get you fired. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they. Well, that's a whole other story. But the, the, it only lasted seven issues anyway. I think you did five issues, Gary, the first five, or, you know, they left, there was the weird thing. They're like, you kept doing the covers, but they wanted somebody else on the interiors. So that 
the book only lasted seven issues. Yeah. Wow. I couldn't. Yeah, I didn't remember that. I do remember that was uh, Studio Source days. Hold on a second. There's a fire truck by my house. The Studio Source days. Uh, I think like someone. I think like maybe Matt Haley would read. Uh, Kupperberg's dialogue from Tachyon out loud just to give everybody a good laugh. Yeah, oh gosh. And um, the uh, so there was this Godzilla thing, and there was a big fight scene in Central Park, and, and it was just I, I put in like um, like this helicopter that was like the news reporters. I put this whole scene in that that wasn't in there, and the Godzilla you know smashed the helicopter, and Tachyon had to save him, and they, it was just this gigantic fight scene. I like he ignored all the stupid stuff he had in there and turned it into this like twelve-page battle royal. In the uh, and I guess he was Kupperber got the script because the editor told me this later. He was kind of like, "Wow, he really uh, really didn't follow the script, did he?" <laughs> and I was told not to. You know, and of course yeah. I ended up taking all the blame for the failure of, of that book. Yeah. Well. Um... Kupperberg was, was was good pals with Levitz, and I think that's why Kupperberg got so many uh, yeah. accounted. I should say that's why it accounted for his longevity at DC. Uh, changing the subject, Wesley Gleason, impressive line work. Aaron, what kind of pens? Um, <clears throat> I'm using the uh, the uh, uh, David Williams recommended um, Zig calligraphy pen. I kind of go back and forth. This. If you look at this, this is a really fat. So you have to be careful with. You can get if you if you use it on its side like this, you can actually get like pretty thin feather lines, but you got to be careful because you can get these really huge fat ones too. So um, I use microns. If I'm not using a brush, I'll use these with a combination of microns to do the microns. I'll do the, like the little tiny detail line work or around his face because this just is a little too bold for me and it gets me a little nervous. So you can get line weight variety with that pen. Yes, but it can it can be tricky. Interesting. Um, Aaron, what is the time situation? Well, technically, I'm supposed to wrap this up at four today because, of course, Graham Nolan is doing a. Uh, he'll be starting a stream probably right about now. Uh, uh, where guys basically doing what we're doing, and then he's going to auction off the artwork to raise fundraiser for his daughter. Um, they do have, they did have insurance. So, but it, as we all know, if you deal with insurance companies, it takes forever to get settled and they've lost. That happened to my daughter. Her house was burned down and it's, it is a nightmare. So yeah, they have to itemize everything and they have to go through claims and, and so they're trying to get him some money immediately because they, they lost everything. They don't have clothes or any place to stay. Yeah, there um, is a go. There is a GoFundMe, by the way, so people right, know. Right, there's a GoFundMe up. Um, but we're so uh, Graham got this idea. Let's you know do this, and I said, okay, we will uh, we will help out. When I say we, I mean I will. I mean everybody's invited, of course. Um, well, so, we could just bring these drawings right into that's that. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> Should we just auction off where we're drawing right now? Well, thing is, I um, you know, I don't know. If there's a huge market for Submariner, but what I could, oh, I was thinking about doing is like a Goblin Queen or something to make sure that it's sold. You know what I'm saying? You know what uh, I'm saying, boys? Yeah, I do. <clears throat> you can make her hippie. Uh, yeah, I can uh, give her the. Uh, Headless Bourgeoisie says, I think Byrne killed off Tachyon in his Fourth World series? Question mark. Uh, he changed. He changed. True? He changed the costume. I know that because he uh, didn't understand what I was doing. Because I had the, uh, he had this sort of. Um, Did you create Tachyon's costume? Yes. And there's a, uh, a hero click they made out of it. I've got it over here. It's like my claim to fame. Um, Let's see it. Well, if you, if you insist, uh, I got to find it here. Damn it, Gary. <laughs> It's uh, oh, here we go. That's yeah, right there. I can't Ooh. tell what that is. Why don't you I go full screen? Can't. I still oh, can't. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Um, it looks like a, a dried up carrot. 
<laughs> Still does. Uh, on focus. Hey. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ah. See, at he, I had his head like smoldering, right? With that energy. There's like an energy tail there behind. Right, him. right, right. Yeah, yeah. Because the idea that, uh, like, our excess heat goes out the top of your head, and so I thought, well. Okay. So when he flies, it 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 looks like a a tail coming out of it. Yeah, head. but the um, what they what they actually screwed this up because if you see that little black light there that covers his uh you know private areas, Naughty it bits. wraps around his back and into his shoulder and comes down there, but it also forms kind of a black energy cape behind him. And Byrne couldn't figure out how it worked, so he just got rid of it um, and made him pretty much like nude man. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the character design. So yeah, so there you go. I got no money for this, but I do have it. You have it. Uh, oh, Peasy says Dan Lawless bringing some class to this joint. Wow, really? Mm. That was a slap at kill. Yeah, no one about like me. <laughs> yeah, so he's yeah he insulted all of us except for Dan with that. Yeah, uh, Stealth X Five for two dollars. Hello, hello, Stealth. Thank you for the two dollars. Um, Paul Brillart just sort of randomly, I ate that with onions and brisket last night. Hmm. Hmm. Well, wait a minute. Jack Elmy says maybe the human torch isn't appropriate, Aaron. What do you mean? No, I don't understand that. Yeah. Okay. Dennis says Graham just went live. So you guys, what we're going to do is, I don't know, you know, David, I don't know if you have plans on hopping over there or what, or, or yeah, yeah. Uh, Dan, uh, but why don't we uh, why don't we wrap this up? Because I don't want to infringe on. This is what nice people do, you know. They 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 look out. They they don't stream against their friends. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. That's yeah yeah yeah. 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 Ooh, that a shout out? Oh. <laughs> yeah, slippery and, slope, slippery slope there, Aaron. Yeah, I know. I'll take it back. Um, oh, Jack Elmy says not appropriate for the fire auction. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Um, actually, that is kind of actually, if I was being sensitive, that would be a smart thing to do. But let's take a look at what we've accomplished so far. I'm going to finish this because I actually like this drawing. Um, I'll start off. We'll go, we'll, uh, so here's, here's, this is what it started off with. And I felt that was a little too posy. Yeah, he is posing. Check out my arm there. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, I want a little bit more dynamic energy. And so there I, we go. I think is much better. But the, the, the human torch is better on the other one. We can't have everything. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to see if you would check. No, you're such a dick. Uh, I, no, I, no, this is a better <laughs> It is better. Well, anyway, we got some water down here. So I'll finish this up probably tonight at some point. I'm going to be drawing a lot today. But I'll finish this I'll up finish tonight and uh, post it. Because I think it's actually going to be a pretty decent piece here when I get it all done. Uh, I agree. I'd like to see. So it. there we go. So I think the pose yeah. is better. So that's uh, Submariner from 19. And whoever buys it as the bonus of the artwork on the back. That's right. You can flip it over and go, okay, this is the good side. This is the bad side. Um, okay. Uh, let's see what Dan Lawless is cooking. Uh, here we go. Wow. Now, here's the thing about Dan. I love how you do your faces. You do the most interesting faces. I both say, on that and looks like a Conan face to me. Yeah. I, 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 I just. <laughs> I don't know. Well, he's eyes. got a he's got a shield. Really, he almost really needs a sword when you think about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you're right. That's a cool piece, and it I, is. When very, Captain very, America very throws nice. his mighty shield. No, but there seems to be something kind of wonky. Is that? Are you drawing that crooked on the paper? Uh, what do you mean? The edge of your paper. Oh no, no, no. This is a, a, a T square. Oh, okay. I was like, what? <laughs> it was just like. Yeah, you got a weird shape. I use I use my uh, this uh, my um I mean my triangle gotcha. as a kind of a you know to keep it from smudging. So I, oh, I got so. you. Okay, all right. Well, you got to finish this, Dan, because I want to see what this looks like when you're all. Yeah, around. I would like to see it too. That'd be pretty cool. That's yeah, it's awesome. actually turned out pretty all right. Yeah, I like it. So uh, I want to hold out a second here, and I, I need to debut this for the super chat. No, it didn't work. Yeah, I don't. We didn't hear anything except some slight gurgling. Okay, uh, you got in. Spambot, Australian, ten dollars. I guess it's Australian. Maybe it's. Uh, I don't know. But thank you, Spambot, for that. Great work so far. It's been a while. So have ten bucks. Well, thank you. Um, we'll take it gl gleefully. All right. 
Nice work, Dan, um, especially the last second. Um, oh, my gosh, David, it looks like his head is moving when you're doing that. It's <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he, he animated it. Oh, look at that. Wow. Okay, so you've got the surfer. Is that Galactus's hand back there? Yeah, Galactus is right there. Well, so. can you pull the pull the the or is it taped down? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, dude, you got to finish that. That's going to be cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Wow. That if we we're if we we're keeping track, that's like definitely second place today. You got. <laughs> uh, oh, good. You got the. Uh, Kevin Nolan mouth going on there. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, that's going to be, you got to finish that, David. That's going to be cool. Um, what we want to do, you guys, is uh, hopefully uh, have these things wrapped up so we can show them finished next week. Normally, we wouldn't uh, crap out this early, but uh, we don't want to, like I said, we want to support Graham and, and what he's got going on over in his channel. So we'll be running over there shortly. So, um, Aaron, you're going over there right yeah. now? Yeah. Okay, do you have them send us the link? We'll, we'll, we'll give them these pieces, man. Shit. Okay. Um, I, I don't actually have the link. It's probably in the my Facebook chat with them, but I'll check, and then I'll, I'll send it over to you guys. Uh, if you want I to got it in. already. Okay. Yeah, Dan, you're the one who got left out. I guess maybe he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> That's all right, Dan. I, I didn't get it either. I'll, well, Gary, you're not going to draw anything. You're just going to no, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> make fun of us. Um. Yeah. Anyway, um, I want to thank Dan Lawless for dropping in last second and yeah, uh, not only you, uh, not so only coming in, but bringing the heat. Yeah, and, I'm the uh, fireman of uh, comics, you know. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so, anyway. The maniac uh, of comics. Oh, okay. I want to thank everybody uh, in the chat with the super chats, everything, guys. We had a great turnout for the show, uh, despite the, uh, the failure of the poll. And uh, try and keep that in mind next time. Hit the like and subscribe on the way out. You're out the door, so we can help this. Hey, channel can I grow. mention just my my channel too? Because no, I'm really putting a, no. I'm putting a lot of my, uh, no, my no 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 tutorials no. up. We don't, no, no, we don't no, want to no. hear. We're no, no. not here. None of that. Bullshit. Hey, I'm coming here. I got to get something. <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. Tell us all about. I've it. been doing a lot more tutorials lately, so that people can check out my channel. I got all kinds of stuff up there. Just and it's it's. I'm gonna keep them coming. You know, I've got. Is it is it drawings. just Dan Lawless on YouTube will help us find it? How to draw comic books by Dan Lawless. How to draw comic books by Dan Lawless. Yeah. On YouTube. So you I go. Got check lots it out. of good stuff. It's a, it's really an art course. It really, it really is. It's gonna be. So. So check that out. Also, the campaigns for everybody are in the links uh, in the description of this video. The links will take you to those campaigns. You guys, thank you so much for joining us here on Graybeards. We will see you next week right here. Uh, for more exciting times. And who knows, maybe Kelsey will show up. Maybe he won't. Uh, it's one of the mystery, great mysteries of life. Uh, tune in to find out. We'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much. See you guys. Peace. <laughs> Head over to Graham's channel.